Hello everyone, welcome back to Game Dev Night. Today is episode 7 of our platformer series and we're going to do meleeing. So this is just simple meleeing in Godot and let's hop straight into it. So we're going to go into our player and we're going to make a new animation. So animation player, animation and make an animation called attack. Like so. And now we're just, just going to make a attack animation. So 0 0.2 seconds long on the right because it's 3 frames here on the left. Episode 7 is in Discord, so if you want it, it's over there. Now hit property, property track like so, and sprite to D. Go on texture, and now let's put these textures in. So this is just like all the other animations we've made so far. Nothing new, so I'm just dragging the sprites like so. There we go, cool. And now let's actually make the input for attacking. So in here we need to make an attack input, so you can make this whatever you want. I'm just going to make it left mouse button. But if you want it to be E or some weird button that the player attacks with, go ahead. Cool. And now on our player script, we need to make a new variable. A export variable, sorry. Export variable attacking equals false. Cool. And now we need to go on to the process. So function process, like so. Then if input dot is action just pressed attack then attack like so we haven't made the function yet but we're going to make it now so over here we have a function attack like so and attacking equals true and then animation dot play attack cool there you go and now for our other animations because we're not using an animation tree uh, we need to actually put in some logic here so when you're not attacking, update the animations. Cool. So I can hope you I hope you see why we're doing that. So it's just when we aren't attacking, then we can update these animations. Because we don't want the player to just attack and it just instantly switches to the other animation. Cool. Now we need to reset this attacking value back to false somehow. How are we going to do that? In the actual animation. So we're going to click add track, property track, and click on our player, and he could see attacking, the boolean we made. This one over here. So you just hit export, and then you'll actually be able to see it in your animation. Now at the very end, we're going to insert key, and it'll be false by default. There you go. You just made a simple melee animation. See, very simple, very nice, very cool, very spiffy. And now we need to actually give this some logic. So let's do that. We're going to go into our player, and there's a few ways you can do detection in areas. I'm going to do my favorite way. So I'm going to make an area 2D. I'm going to rename it to attack area. You can call it whatever you want. This is just the area that attacks, and we have to turn off monitorable. We don't want things to be able to see this. Only it can detect other things. And then give it a collision shape. Give it a, let's just say a circle, a simple shape like that. And let's move it onto the sword, like so. And let's make it a little bit smaller. Cool, there you go. That's how we will detect things. And now let's do the logic for this. So we're going to our script. And in here, we'll need a new variable. Variable overlapping objects equals, and then we do attack area like so, dot get overlapping areas. Cool. So what that's going to do is it's going to check for everything inside of this circle when you call this. So when you call this right here, it'll check for everything inside the circle and put it into a list. So if there's a few things on top of each other, they'll all get put into a list. And what we can then do is for loop through that, we can go for area in overlapping areas, uh, objects, sorry. Cool. And what we're going to do then is we're going to do var parent equals area dot get parent like so and then we can do print parent dot name that should hopefully work I think <laughs> it should and now let's actually make something we can detect. So currently there's nothing to detect. Let's go into our checkpoint in Area 2D and let's turn on monitorable. Cool, now if you hit play and we hit something, you can see it's a checkpoint. Now that'll work for anything. So if we want to turn it on for other stuff, we can, but let's just make a simple little barrel quickly. So we're going to turn off monitorable like so. 
we're going to hit the plus sign up here, 2D scene, and we're going to call this barrel. Why not? And we're going to have to give it a area 2D and give that a collision shape as well. And let's give it a sprite. So sprite 2D, there we go. And we'll just go into episode four over here on the left and select chest. I decided let's just do a chest. Why not? Um, and I'm going to rename this to chest like so. Cool. It has a lot of coins around it. I don't know if I like that that much, but yeah, we'll change it up soon. This is just to actually get a proof of concept and show you that it does work. So let's give this a square. And there we go. Give it a nice little shape so we can actually see it. Cool. There we go. That is essentially a chest done. We'll just save this in scenes. And I'll just save it here because I'm going to delete it after this video. This is just to prove that it does work. Let's go into area 2D, and now let's put this chest somewhere, shall we? So scenes, chest. Let's put a chest over here. Why not? Good little spot for a chest. Let's put a chest up here. Cool little area as well. And yeah, let me show you that it works. Oh, wait, sorry. Well, for now, we can actually just detect if we can actually see the chest. So let's make sure that works. Oh, I am. I can't even play my own platformer. That's how good I am at games. Cool. And yeah, see it prints chest. Now, what can we do instead of that? Instead of printing what it is, we can do parent.q. Uh, I spelled that wrong. Q3, I think that's how it's spelled. No, it's not. Ah, you see, I spelled it wrong. I knew I would. Q3, like so. Copy that. Place this with that and get rid of these brackets. Whew. And that is not meant to be in the print. It's meant to be out there. Cool. So now I've hit play. This will destroy anything with an area on it currently. So if it has monitorable on, but for now it'll be fine. Let's destroy this chest. Bah! And you can see it works. So we can actually destroy things now. So there you go. You now know how to do meleeing in Godot. And all you need to do is replace this Q3 logic with whatever you have. So if you have something that can take damage, you'd replace this with take damage. And it would just hit anything in that area. So cool. You just made a simple melee effect in Godot. Now I'm going to delete this because that's not what I want. And I'm also going to delete this chest. Well, I need to delete it from the scene first. And there we go. Cool. So I hope you guys enjoyed. That was that, essentially. We are done. Now you know how to do mailing in Godot. Sweet. Now, next video, we will do actual enemies that walk around so we can actually kill them. We'll make a simple enemy that can walk side to side on these platforms. And we'll also maybe just polish some things a little bit more, like maybe add a moving platform or something, but I'm not 100% sure. But it is definite we will put an enemy in the game next video. Sweet. I also want to apologize. I did not end up using my new microphone. Again, I think I addressed that at the start of the video. It was just having a few little issues, but I should sort it out tonight, and then next video I'll have a much higher quality mic. But yeah, I've made my map quite a bit bigger, and there's a lot of room for special things, like situations. You can see if you walk down here, you can see that secret area. And if you go back to spawn, which let's hope I'm good enough to do that, you can see I'll put a invisible platform over here, so you'll be able to jump on it and jump up. And then I have this secret area over here. So I've made a cool little map with a few little things. So there's just some situations for us to use basically every item we will make in the series. But I might make it bigger, but yeah. If there's any areas you're having, any issues, uh, just let me know. I'll try help out. But if you follow this exactly how we've been doing it so far, it all should just work. Uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, feel free to join Discord down below, and as always, have a nice day everyone, and thanks for the support. Bye-bye.